Ladies and gentlemen, how many times are we gonna have to talk about mom's boyfriend before we get it in our heads in America that this is a scary trend that babies like this and this little girl's name is Autumn. Autumn was only four years old and what she got from her mom's boyfriend and fr fr from the lack of protection from her mom is just absolutely ridiculous. But again, her name is Autumn Horrock, which is spelled O-H-O-R-A-K. She was four years old and a Wisconsin mother and her boyfriend have been charged in the murder of this baby who was only four years old. And this is the mom's biological, biological child. After the little girl's body was found dead, covered in bruises and human bite marks. Now, how is it that we've seen this happen so many times, right? We've seen this happen so many times just over the course of this year. We, we don't even have to count last year. I mean, we could, but we don't have to. And it's just sickening the number of stories that we have that have come out that are very, very similar to this one. Okay. Let me also say to the people who are watching right now, I do notice that we did get our thumbs up over just over a hundred. So now that we have, when you guys come in and click that thumbs up, the chat is now turned on for everybody to be able to speak their mind and their thoughts on this story, okay? We're gonna talk about all of the people that you see in these photos as well. Now, for these two freaking idiots right here, I don't know what they look like. They look like, uh, they look like troll dolls. I don't know how to describe what they look like, but this is the boyfriend and the biological mother of this kid. Now, the baby's mom, her name is Christina Collado, who's 21 years old, and her boyfriend, Jerome Millen, who was 22 years old, and they, they wanted to make sure and stress this point. He's not the father of this little girl. Both of them are now accused of causing the death after this little girl was utterly tortured over a period of months at the hands of the boyfriend. Does this not like, I'm just curious how many, how, like how many people are in the chat right now that have heard this story so often? It seems like this is what we talk about all the time. What do you guys think? Cause it seems like I, I feel like I keep repeating myself, but each one of these stories are all different stories. Somebody says she looked like an elf. <laughs> They're like alien troll dolls. <laughs> Y'all got to tell me what they look like. They look a bit odd, but nonetheless, let's talk about this. Police were called to the property at around 7 a.m. on Friday to find the four-year-old girl unresponsive. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Now, officers said the little girl was only wearing a diaper and was covered in bruises on her jaw, on her head, forearm, and sternum in her chest area. She also had what appeared to be a human bite mark and a burn injury. So not only all of that was already bad enough, but he chewed on her. Like, what is he like a fucking, uh, what, what do they call it? Like a cannibal or something? Bite marks on the kid. I don't know. Do y'all think that's a sexual thing? What do y'all think about that? Y'all think he molested this little girl? I believe he might have. And another person would also have to wonder if this is not his kid, how did he get so much access to this little girl that's not his, but these type of whores, these type of mothers will make it so damn difficult for the biological father to be able to spend time with his kid, to take his kid to fucking Chuck E. Cheese or any other type of place. That's the biological father, by the way, right there. That's Kyle Horick. He's the biological father. These type of mothers, it's not all, and most of my smart ladies in the chat understand, right? West Coast Honey said a cannibal. I agree. I think that there might have been some molestation going on, like Keyshawn said. They will make it so damn difficult for the biological father to do anything with his kid. Like they will take the kid, whenever it's time for the dad to get the kid, here's what happens for most of y'all who don't know how effed up this is when it comes to parenting, um, not parenting, what, what do they call that? Out, uh, birthing your kids outside of wedlock. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell y'all how that go. 
you go to go pick up your kid. And when it's time for you to pick up your kid, they send the kid off in rags. How many of y'all are familiar with that? They send the kids off in bullshit clothes, dirty clothes, torn up clothes, tattered shoes. Their hair is not done. It's not groomed. And what does dad have to do? First thing dad has to do is go get them some fresh, clean clothes, get them a haircut, get them a bath, get them all dressed and clean just for the dad to have them maybe for a day or two. And then turn around and send the kids back over there fresh to death while mom is doing nothing but taking those child support checks and spending them on herself. And in a lot of cases, they spend them on boyfriends who ain't worth shit. That dude looks like a damn idiot. And look, he got that big fat knot upside his head. I, I hope it's because he got that fat. Y'all will see the picture come up here in a minute, right? Somebody said the CPS involved. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out here in a moment. That dude had a fat knot upside his head. And I hope it's because somebody punched him dead in his shit. Because he deserved it, right? But let's, let's, get back, let's get past that for a moment. Officer said the little girl was only wearing a diaper and was covered in bruises and bite marks. Okay. Like I said, that sounds sexual to me. The boyfriend, Jerome Millen, who was already known to local cops. So it sounds like this little pussy ass white boy was a thug him dead his damn self. So that means if he was well known to the authorities, then that also means that the mom should have known. If the bitch didn't know any better, then you know what she should have did? Got a background check. Why, if you care about your child, why would you not care about who you put your child around, right? Just saying. Now, he was well known to the cops. That dude right there had fled the scene before officers arrived, but was tracked down to a friend's house and arrested, according to police. So that little pussy little boy right there tried to run. When officers told him, Autumn was dead. The suspect allegedly responded, so my life is over? That was his response. That was his response. He confessed to repeatedly abusing the little girl and he admitted that prolonged horrific abuse had killed her. The report said, not my words, it's the report. So if you get mad at me, don't get mad at me, get mad at what the courts have. It's their words, it's their documents that they're gonna put into the state file and file against these shitty ass parents, okay? Now, let's move on. If all the injuries cause Autumn to die, it's my fault, it's my fault, he said, according to the report. The night before Autumn was found dead, Jerome Millen beat her repeatedly, covered her mouth multiple times, and then he held a pillow over her face to smother her, he admitted to police. What do y'all think that's gonna do to a child if you restrict their breathing and put a pillow over their face? What do you think that's gonna do to a four-year-old? Matter of fact, what type of normal sane individual would think that that is some level of discipline for a child? Like, how do you even rationalize that that's appropriate? Have y'all, y'all remember the stories that I did, right? Can y'all, y'all can post in the chat and tell me what y'all think. My son is about to turn three and I'm trying to potty train him. And it's hard because I work at daytime. Raising children is a hard thing to do that is why it's not meant for us to have all of these kids outside of wedlock when are we going to get that shit through our heads it's difficult work it's difficult work for two devoted parents to do this how does a person rationalize discipline as i'm going to restrict your breathing to make sure that you can't breathe and matter of fact Look at this little girl. How bad could she have possibly been? How bad could this little girl have possibly been to only been four years old? And I'm sorry, man, if you can't get a four-year-old child to do what it is that you need them to do, to get them to behave, or to get them to do anything, if you can't get a four-year-old to do it, then I'm sorry, you're just a shitty parent. 
How many of y'all agree with that? Let's move on. He also reportedly said, if she suffocated, that is my responsibility and I killed that child. That is what the police wrote down that he said to them. An autopsy declared the death a homicide by suffocation. That is proven by an autopsy. Christina Collado, the mother, the biological mother, pinned the blame for her daughter's death on her boyfriend, of course, because that's what whores do. They're not gonna take any responsibility about this. They're gonna say, oh yeah, it was all him. I didn't know what he was doing. Like they're gonna throw their hands up and try to get themselves out of trouble. They're not gonna even show any love or respect for their own kid. She said she saw him physically abuse her many times, including seeing him bite the four-year-old on two separate occasions. To the people in the chat, Cleo, Aisha, Jerry, Romanian girl, Ricky, Addie, tell me what y'all think about this. If the mother watched this man beat her child up and bite her child, chewing, literally trying to take a bite out of this child. What type of sane mother, what type of caring mother is she to allow that to happen and not immediately put her foot down and say, you're not gonna do this to my child, call the police, get the fuck up out of there, but not just ignore it. What type of responsible parent is that? What do y'all think about that? What's going on, Knight Rider? How are you? Good to see you in the building. But y'all tell me what you think, though. I think hashtag TTO, hashtag TTT. And y'all have to tell people that are watching for the first time, what does that mean? Hashtag TTO, hashtag TTT. This is a perfect example of that, okay? Now, she says she saw him slam the little girl's head into the floor the night before she died. Wow. However, she admitted that if she had protected her daughter, she would still be alive. No shit, Sherlock. Can we get a hashtag Captain Obvious? Yes, obviously, bitch. If you had protected your daughter, yes, she would be living. Like, just, mm, oh my goodness. If I had protected my daughter, she'd be alive. Well, yeah, dumbass. Yeah, I, I think they probably would survive if you protect them. If you had a modicum of sense, yes, your kid would probably still be alive. <sighs> Let's move on. Family members told the police the victim had sustained a campaign of physical abuse at the hands of the boyfriend, Jerome Millen, but were too afraid to report him. Come on, man. look, look, I'm sorry. I have to, can I be an asshole for a moment? How many people we got watching? We got 180 people. Can y'all click that thumbs up, please? Bring a few more people in here. We should have a couple hundred thumbs up. If y'all have, if y'all want to show some love for this baby, if nothing else, click the thumbs up for the baby. Not even for me, do it for the baby, okay? Let me show y'all something. Do it for that little face, that, that little girl right there on the right-hand side of the screen. Do it for her. Click that thumbs up. Family members said to the police that the victim had sustained a campaign of physical abuse at the hands of Jerome Millen, but they were too afraid to report it. Now, if they were too afraid to report it, then what does that say about the boyfriend? Matter of fact, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get a... What the, I want to put this picture up. I'm sorry. I know I'm not the hardest man on the internet or nothing like that. I'm sorry, but I want to ask the good people in the chat, the AFC, I want to ask you guys a question. Can I do that? I'm looking into y'all eyes right now. Can I ask y'all a question real quick? Look at this white boy right here. I'm sorry. 
But how scary does this little pussy ass white boy look? Hmm. Does he look that fucking hard? Matter of fact, y'all gotta watch the video of him walking in court. This is a frail body, tiny, little bitty ass white boy who probably ain't even over 150 pounds. If you cut me in half, I'd probably weigh more than him. I'm sorry, doesn't he look like the, like, like the type of dude you just walk up and slap the shit out of and tell him do something about it, bitch? Yes? He don't look like the bully. He looks like the person that was bullied in school. Nothing hard about this little fucking meth head looking white boy right here. I'm sorry, it's just not. How many of y'all, if he walked up on you and told me, give me your keys, how many of y'all would be afraid of him? <laughs> if this motherfucker walked up to you and he said, I'm gonna I'm beat the shit out of you, I'm gonna kick your ass. How many of y'all would look at this face and be afraid? Me personally, I'm sorry. I'd probably laugh his ass out of the house. I'm sorry, there are just some faces that are just not scary faces. There are just some people who are not scary people. And if you had multiple family members who said that they were afraid of this, then I'm going to tell you to the father, to the grandparents, to the cousins, to any of y'all who are afraid of him, y'all are fucking stupid. All of y'all against that, y'all are scared of him. Y'all got no fucking heart. No motherfucking heart. Let's move on. An obituary posted online by Proco Funeral Home described little baby Autumn as a chatterbox, said she would be sadly missed by her father, Kyle Horrock. Jerome Millen is charged with physical abuse of a child resulting in death, which carries a maximum penalty of life in prison. Autumn's mother, Christina Collado, is charged with chronic neglect of a child resulting in the death and faces up to 60 years in prison. I'm going to read that again, just in case if y'all missed that. They appeared in Milwaukee court on this past Tuesday. The mom could potentially get 60 years in prison. The boyfriend is going to get life in prison. Why do they not charge them the exact same way? She allowed it to happen. She knew her boyfriend wasn't shit. She knew her boyfriend was a thug. She knew this little pussy ass white boy right here. Love biting and beating on four-year-old children. She knew this shit. She watched it happen, and that little meth head bitch needs life in jail too. How many of you, how many of y'all want to get mad about what I just said? You don't like me name calling? I don't really give a shit. People need to get some damn heart. Start caring about these kids instead of caring about what the fuck I call some criminals. They are criminals. Take the testicles, take the ovaries. Hashtag TTT, hashtag TTO. These sons of bitches are the type of motherfuckers that need a death sentence. I'm sorry, but they do. Let me give the fair usage and let me calm down and let's go ahead and get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. Can we get a hashtag when you date thugs, you date death? Hashtag, when you date thugs, you date death. That is our mantra. We've been saying that for a long time. Hashtag babies for benefits. If y'all ever see anybody say one of those two phrases, y'all know it came from the AFC. That's our shit. Let's get it. 
A South Milwaukee man and woman are accused in the death of the woman's daughter. They appeared in court today for a preliminary hearing. CBS 58's Andy Devine was there. He joins us live at the Milwaukee County Courthouse. Andy. The couple pleaded not guilty in court today and waived their preliminary hearing here at the Milwaukee County Courthouse. That couple, 22-year-old Jerome Millen, is charged with one felony count of physical abuse of a child. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, guys. Let me back this up. How many people we got watching right now? We got right at about 200 people. I want, look, I'm, I'm going to pause this for a second. I want everybody's honest opinion. I, I promise I'll play the videos. I'll, I'll let it roll. But I want y'all to look at this frail body little boy. He's a little boy to me. Like he's damn near young enough to be my son. I know I don't seem like I'm that old. But he's what, 21, 22 years old? He's a little boy. He acts like a little boy. Look at this. Oh, Jerome Millen. Look at this. Come on, man. So y'all mean to tell me, where, where's the white community at? Hello? Do we have any white people in the chat? Is there any white Americans in the chat right about now? Where are my benevolent white people? Are y'all out there? Y'all want to sound off for a moment? Y'all look at this and tell me. It's charged with one. How hard does he look? One felony count of physical. How much do y'all think he bench presses? I don't think this, I don't think he could, like y'all know how, how they have the bar. The bar is 45 pounds. If you've lifted weights, then you know. When they put that bar up there, the bar is 45 pounds by itself. I doubt if he could bench press the damn bar by itself. This is who they were afraid of? Physical abuse of a child and repeated acts called- With them glasses on? How hard was he? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Causing death. 21-year-old oh Christina Collada is charged with felony chronic neglect of a child, according to the criminal- the, Guys, the only reason I'm saying that is because the whole damn family said that they were afraid of this guy. All the family members said that they were afraid of him. My question is what were you afraid of? You, I mean, like, what is he like a, like a fucking martial artist or something? What the fuck? Who, who is he like the white Bruce Lee or some shit? Who, who was he like, like the scrawny version of Chuck Norris or some shit? Is, is he like a martial artist? I don't understand. What is it about him that everybody was afraid of? Where is, is anybody from Wisconsin in the building? I'm sorry. Do we have any people from Wisconsin in the building right now? How many people in Wisconsin would be scared of, of this dude? What's his name? Jerome what? Millen? Yeah, Jerome Millen. How many of y'all are scared of 22-year-old Jerome Millen? Damn. Mm, 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 mm. I thought, man, I thought America had some heart, man. I really did. I thought Americans had heart. ...of a child and repeated acts causing death. 21-year-old Christina Collada is charged with felony chronic neglect of a child. According to the criminal complaint, when first responders got to their home last month, four Three-year-old Autumn Horick had bruises and bite marks all over her body, and she did not have a pulse at the time. Officials say Millen admitted to holding a pillow over the child's face to get her to go to sleep and holding her head underwater so she could, quote, learn how to hold her breath. Here are some of the exchange in court this morning. Did you? Y'all heard that he held her underwater to teach her how to hold her breath. Man, man, man. Understand that if you had a hearing, the state would have to produce witnesses and perhaps other evidence to show that you probably committed a felony. Did you also understand that by waiving that hearing, you are conceding that the state can establish probable cause and you will be ordered to stand trial? Matter of fact, Addy actually brought up something important. Let me ask y'all a question. How many of you guys are familiar that if you witness a crime and you do not report that crime, that you could actually be held responsible for that crime legally or criminally actually. You could be charged criminally for knowing about a crime and not doing anything about it. So if everybody knew that this motherfucker was violent and they didn't do anything about it, when is the law gonna kick in for the children's rights? Uh-oh, uh-oh, is somebody gonna get mad about what I just said? Somebody gonna get in their feels tonight? Hmm, you gotta get in your feels? Cause I just said something that was real? 
if we're going to hold anybody accountable for watching something happen and not reporting it, let alone to grown people, why do we not stand up for the children? Why don't, why doesn't it seem like the children have any rights or am I just tripping? Cause it don't seem like people are trying to stand up and defend children. We are, but what about the courts? Let's move on. Shalina sent in a donation. She said, keep up the great work. And I want to say thank you to you. Also, thank you to Donna Aguayo, who sent in another donation. So Donna, if you are listening, I want to say thank you to you as well. Let's get it. You got to speak up just a little bit. Yes. If convicted, Milo could spend the rest of his life behind Colada. She could spend up to 60 years behind bars. For now, reporting live here in Milwaukee, Andy Devine, CBS 58 News. Andy, thank you so much. President Donald Trump. Here's the next video. New at five, a grieving father talks about his four-year-old daughter. Autumn Horak died last week and now her mother and her mother's boyfriend are charged with abuse and neglect. She was just the perfect. Okay, guys, what you're getting ready to listen to is the biological father. His name is Kyle Horak. And let me say what's up to Elissa Deeds. Please make sure you guys check out Elissa Deeds on Facebook under Elissa Deeds Breaking News, okay? Illicit Deeds Breaking News. Make sure you check her out. She does amazing work making sure putting out stories just like this one, okay? Let me give a shout out real quick to, uh, let me see. You are the best. Please stay safe and keep advocating for these children who cannot. And that is Knight Rider. If she is out there listening, I want to say thank you, Knight Rider. Keyshawn Johnson, if you are in the chat, I want to say thank you very much. Not only for donating once, but donating twice. Thank you very much as well as... Dre the Dream, that's right, my guy. Thank you, Dre the Dream, and also thank you to Miss Mina, who hit us up in Cash App, and Jerry Smith, AFC, fam the best. You guys are the best. We are the AFC together, man. Thank you guys so much. Did I get the Cash App? Just got it. Just got it, Dre. So again, man, shout out to Dre the Dream, man. Appreciate that, bro. I did get your Cash App, so thank you very much. Appreciate that. Died last week, and now her mother and her mother's boyfriend are charged with abuse and neglect. She was just the perfect little angel. Kyle Horak spoke to us on the phone today. His daughter was living with mother Christina Collado and Jerome Millen in South Milwaukee. According to a criminal complaint, first responders called to their home, found the child covered in bruises and bite marks. She had no pulse. Millen now charged with abuse. Collado charged with neglect. Kyle Horak claims Collado kept Autumn from him. The last time he saw his daughter was in late January and had no idea how she was being treated. I want people to know her memory because I don't want her memory to ever go away. I know it won't with me and my family, but people need to know that too. She was the best little thing ever. He says Autumn loved Wow. How many people caught that? I'm going to back it up so y'all can hear the, fi the biological father. His name is Kyle. Now, Kyle is a bit emotional. And I'm going to tell you guys, we need to be sensitive to that because of the fact that this is his daughter. I'm so Uh-oh. Sorry, that was me doing that. I was like, what the fuck was that? Anyway, but we, the reason why we need to be sensitive to the father kind of being emotional the way that he is is because this was his baby girl. And I'm going to tell you guys, I probably would be overly emotional myself if any little thing were to happen to my daughter. I, I'd be enraged. There's just something about a father and his precious princess. But listen to what he said. I was right. The mother prevented him from being able to see his kid. Probably taking his child support check and prevented him from seeing his kid, but she let her thug ass little boyfriend, Jerome Millen, 22 years old, be around her all day long, bite on her, hit her, smack her, choke her, slam her all damn day. So why can't the biological father see his kid? Hmm, interesting. Thank you, Shalina, and thank you also to Jeannie Torres. Thank you, ladies. Salute to my ladies in the chat, man. I see y'all. Thank you. Criminal complaint. First responders called to their home, found the child covered in bruises and bite marks. She had no pulse. Millen now charged with abuse. Collado charged with neglect. Kyle Horak claims Collado kept Autumn from him. The last time he saw his daughter was in late January, and he had no idea how she was being treated. I want people to know her memory because I don't want her memory to ever go away. I know it won't with me and my family, but people need to know that too. She was the best little thing ever. He says Autumn loved to talk, loved her dad, was nice to everyone. 
He is now trying to win custody of her one-year-old brother, who, according to Horak, is now in foster care. Oh, wow. Okay. That's the one-year-old brother. But I wonder if that's his kid also. I don't know if that's his biological kid. But I hope he wins custody. As a matter of fact, if the biological father is watching this, if there's anything that he needs as far as information or, or whatever it is, man, if it's something we could do to pitch in, if he reaches out, I'll let you guys know. Or if you guys reach out to him, I hope he gets custody because he deserves. That's the least he deserves at this point. It's custody of one of those babies. He lost one of them already. All right, let's keep going. Funeral preparations underway for a four-year-old South Milwaukee girl who died at the hands of another. Her mother and her mother's boyfriend appearing in court today for their alleged actions in connection to her death. Suzanne Spencer joining us live outside the Milwaukee County Courthouse with why we are not reporting some of these details. Suzanne? Ted, some of the details in this criminal complaint are horrifying. Today in court, the district attorney, what called what this girl went through torture. And now child advocates are asking anyone who knows anything about child abuse to report it because it could make a difference. Did y'all hear what she said? She said child advocates are asking if people see something and say something. Matter of fact, I want to ask you guys a question. I know I'm not a big YouTuber. I know I don't have the largest audience. I don't have the most views or anything like that. But I think people are listening, okay? How many of you people believe that these news stations are actually watching channels like ours? How, how many of y'all believe that people are actually finally starting to hear our voices? And how many of you people believe that we are now starting to make a difference and we're starting to make a dent and we're starting to let people know that this stuff is serious and people need to take it more seriously, right? I love that she said that. Some of the details in this criminal complaint are horrifying. Today in court, the district attorney, what called what this girl went through torture and now child advocates are asking anyone who knows anything about child abuse to report it because it could make a difference. I'm not going to take credit for that. I'm going to give us the AFC credit for that. Most of y'all have been around me long enough to know how I am. I try not to take a bunch of credit myself for anything. I say that's an us thing. It's a we thing. We are the AFC. I don't say I'm the AFC. I say we are the AFC. Matter of fact, while you guys are watching, if y'all would click that thumbs up, we're doing pretty good. Let's try to reach 200 thumbs up. We only need 13 more people to click that thumbs up. We've got enough people here to do it. All right. Let me give a shout out real quick. I'm going to do these as we get them so people do not miss out on their donations. We have, uh, we had w one more come in from, I don't know why I cannot see your name. It is not coming up. I'm going to pull it up on the computer. I'll pull it up on the computer. Autumn Horick had a bright smile, was a chatterbox. In her obituary, the four-year-old's family says she will be sadly missed. Those closest to her. State of Wisconsin versus Christina Collado. The girl's mother, yeah. Christina Collado. Count one is physical abuse of a child, repeated acts causing death. And her boyfriend, Jerome Millen Jr., are now charged in connection to her death. If these allegations prove to be true, this child was utterly tortured over a period of months before she died at the hands of this defendant. Prosecutor said the look at this dude. Tell me he don't look nerdy, man. I'm sorry. He don't look hard at all. He look nerdy. He looks little. He looks frail. And the family saying they were afraid of this dude. They were so afraid of this dude that they wouldn't even at least call the police on him. Man, I'm sorry, man. People are just, it's too many people just full of excuses. Is she pregnant again? Uh, Elizabeth, that I do not know, but I do know that she has a one-year-old. She has a one-year-old and then she had baby Autumn. And I don't know if, if uh, Kyle Hork, the biological father, I don't know if he's the biological father of both of those kids or just one. They didn't specify, so I do not know. But the biological father of Autumn is trying to get custody of the little boy, the one-year-old, because he's in foster care. He's stuck in foster care right now. I know this story is crazy, man, so we'll just try to do, to do our best and try to follow along, okay? All right, let's keep going. 
little girl endured months of abuse at Millen's hands, beginning in September at a South Milwaukee home. Court documents say Millen beat her, held her underwater, even bit her. Authorities say the girl's mother failed to get help. Y'all heard that, right? Why foster care? Uh, Nina, I, that's a good question. Usually because whenever custody is taken from a biological mom and if the dad doesn't have custody, the first place they put those kids is in um, foster care unless one of the other family members come out and immediately try to get custody, which is what the father is trying to do right now. So I, that might just be a technicality. We did have a PayPal that came in. I don't know why I can't see it now. I don't know if it went through or if it canceled or what, but it was from somebody named Cole. So if you're listening, I don't see it yet, but when it comes through, I will read that off and give you a shout out. Let me also thank um, MMO Family Girl. If you're out there, she said, uh, thank you, stay safe and always supporting the cause. And she sent in another one. Damn it, I can't see it now. But also to uh, Elissa Deeds said, uh, one child advocate to another. So thank you, Elissa Deeds, which is Elissa Deeds breaking news on Facebook. Thank you very much for yours. It is physical abuse of a child, repeated acts causing death. And her boyfriend, Jerome Millen Jr., are now charged in connection to her death. If these allegations prove to be true, this child was <coughs> utterly tortured over a period of months before she died at the hands of this defendant. Prosecutors said the little girl endured months of abuse at Millen's hands, beginning in September at a South Milwaukee home. Court documents say Millen beat her, held her underwater, even bit her. Authorities say the girl's mother failed to get help. If the allegations prove true, Miss Collado stood by and watched her child be repeatedly beaten at the hands of Mr. Millen and did not take action to protect her child. A criminal complaint says five other witnesses knew about the abuse, saying, I should have called CPS because maybe she wouldn't be dead. And you need to tell them what he does to that little girl. We all play a role in keeping children safe that we know. And one of the ways that we do that is through reporting child abuse and neglect. That is a first and critical step that can make a huge difference, according to Susan Conwell with Kids Matter Inc. It's just devastating that it takes another fatality for people to learn the lesson. A heartbreaking mm -hmm. loss for a little girl who just loves living life as a four-year-old. If you know of any instances of child abuse or neglect, this is the number you want to call 414-220-SAFE. Again, 414-220-SAFE. Court documents say the girl's mother admitted if she properly protected her daughter, she may still be alive today. The mother's boyfriend also telling police in court documents it was his fault. We'll certainly see how these cases play out in court when both of these suspects are due back next week. Reporting live in downtown Milwaukee. To answer your question, Brandy said, did the boyfriend live with her? The answer is yes, based on what I understand. Addie said, I found a Facebook page for Autumn's memory and sent them a message. Uh, I emailed you a copy of the message I sent them. That's that's fine. I mean, however you guys interact with those people is completely fine. Um, you know, even if y'all just want to leave just messages of just condolences, I mean, that's that's cool, too. Suzanne Spencer, Fox 6 News. Heartbreaking. Suzanne, thank you. The photo of the smiling face of Autumn Horak is tragically from her online obituary. Prosecutors say her final months inside this South Milwaukee home were filled with pain. Her body covered in bruises inflicted at the hands of 22-year-old Jerome Millen, her mom's live-in boyfriend. The girl was found... So y'all heard that, right? I'm going to back it up. Who was that that asked that? Did he live with her? So, Brandy, here's the answer to your question. Listen up. Here we go. Here's the answer right here in this video. Pain. Her body covered in bruises inflicted at the hands of 22-year-old Jerome Millen, her mom's live-in boyfriend. Y'all heard that, right? Oh, Cody. Okay. So, thank you very much, Cody. Um, It looked like your donation was trying to come in. I don't know what happened, or maybe it's just my app messing up. But thank you, uh, thank you, Cody. Is inflicted at the hands of 22-year-old Jerome Millen, her mom's live-in boyfriend. The girl was found dead there Friday. If these allegations prove to be true, this child was <coughs> utterly tortured over a period of months before she died at the hands of this defendant. According to the complaint, Millen was frustrated by the child. Family members saying they heard and saw him abusing the girl, even holding her head under water, but said nothing because they were, quote, afraid of him. This defendant fled from the residence upon... I'm going to back that up and I'm going to let y'all hear it again. 
Why do I have to keep repeating myself? Because I want to make sure that I drive the damn point home. They were afraid of him. By him abusing the girl, even holding her head underwater, but said nothing because they were, quote, afraid of him. This defendant fled from the residence upon discovering that the child was likely deceased within the home, indicated to his own mother and others that he was going to be, quote, long gone and attempted to flee. Prosecutors charged Autumn's mom, 21-year-old Christina Collado, with chronic neglect causing death, admitting to police Millen often struck and even bit Autumn. And the night Autumn died, she watched Millen, quote, slam her head into the floor twice and then held a pillow over her face, smothering her. Autumn died of suffocation. If the allegations proved true, Ms. Collado stood by and watched her child be repeatedly beaten at the hands of Mr. Millen and did not take action to protect her child, mm. ultimately her child dying. Both Collado and Millen remain in jail here. If convicted of physical abuse of a child resulting in death, Millen would face a mandatory life sentence. At the Milwaukee County Jail, Nick Ford, WISN 12 News. I'm sorry, there is just not that much fear in the world to be fearing this dude looking like Jeffrey Dahmer. I agree, Crestline Iceberg. <laughs> Said this little, this, little, this little dude, this boyfriend of hers, rape his face looking ass dude. Let me see if I can get his face on the screen. This dude, come on, man. What's so scary looking about him? Goofy looking motherfucker. A freaking goof. Look how skinny he is. They were afraid of him. This dude looked like he's skin and bone. Afraid of what? Y'all, they were so afraid of him. So afraid of this dude. Let me get this baby's face on the screen. That they could not make a simple phone call for that beautiful face little angel that you guys see on my screen right there. That's how afraid they were. Apparently this angel didn't deserve to be protected. She did not deserve human decency to not be bitten, hit, tortured, drowned, suffocated. What did this baby do that was so wrong to get what she deserved? And again, this is why I believe that if we're going to make a change in America, and I want you guys to hear me and hear me well before we close this thing out, this is the end. And I'm gonna tell you guys something that you may or may not understand. I believe that instead of giving the perpetrator, the boyfriend, more time than the mother, here's what I think would really, really make these bitches change their tune. Switch it. Y'all hear me? Switch it. Give the boyfriend 60 years in prison and give the mom life in prison because the mom took her child to the thug zoo and this cracker ass white boy right here, this little thug, little pussy right here that you see on my screen, she stuck him in the thug lion cage and that thug mauled and killed her baby. And now she wants sympathy from taking her baby to the thug zoo. How do you get sympathy for putting your kid in a fucked up position? I think you need to switch it and give the mom more time. Give the mom the harsher penalty because at the end of the day, it is the mother's responsibility. It's her body. It's her choice. It is her responsibility and her God given responsibility to make sure and put that baby in the safest and most protected nurturing situation there is. If she's unable to do that, then I believe that maybe mothers like this should not have custody of kids, nor should they be trusted off top to have custody of their kids. If you're gonna take a check from a man and say that it's gonna be the mom's responsibility and the mom is the better parent, then in my opinion, then the man needs to be able to walk away from that 
and not be financially liable for that kid if you're not going to even allow him to, to be able to see his kid, spend time with his kid, and he's going to be under the rule of that mother. So when she fails, the last thing that this man needs to be doing is losing out financially on a kid that he can't even see properly. That doesn't even make any damn sense. To me, if you're going to take money out of my check, then I automatically need to have 50% custody. To me, that's fair. Have custody. I've been there. I am currently going through that. And I know what that struggle is like. To sit there and have to, but you know what, you know, it's, it's really a psychological thing, but nonetheless, you know, I know it's meant to make us weaker as a society, but I've always told my sisters this and ladies, I want y'all to hear me and hear me well. It doesn't matter what type of bad things that the system tries to implement on us as Americans and weaken us. Still, if we come together, we can still beat this thing, right? If we would have just come together and say, you know what? We're not going to acquiesce to the options that the government has put on the table because it's not good for us as a whole. We can easily overcome this. Every individual situation, this little girl might not have suffered the way that she did and might not have met her demise the way that she did if the biological father would have had legal 50% custody of that kid. Or if the mom didn't love this baby enough, which clearly she did not love this child, she did not love this child, then she, she, she could have easily given custody to the dad and I guarantee you he would have been happy to keep this little girl, protect her and raise her. But these women only have these children for the benefits that they can collect from them. Hashtag babies for benefits. When you date thugs, you date death. She gambled on a thug and she lost. I hope they put some more knots on his head. I hope the next time that we see him coming out of court, that I see a knot here, a knot here, a knot here, a here, black eyes here. I hope half of his face is ripped off. I hope he walks in with a broken arm. I hope he walks in with a sling. I hope he walks in with a wheelchair. Because anything that they do to him in prison for what he did to that little four-year-old girl is still not enough. There's more suffering that needs to happen. And after he leaves this physical, this physical realm and goes to hell and his little special pedophile, child molester, child abuser corner in, 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 in Satan's lair, then he will have a whole eternity of suffering at that point as well as the mom. But I think that if they're gonna really set a precedence, I think that they need to start giving the moms just as much time. If he's gonna get life in prison, give that whore of a mom life in prison as well for not only finding this man, putting this baby in that position, watching it happen, and then not saying shit about it. To me, that's just as guilty as what he did. Both of them are just as bad. And if you really want change in this world, then what you have to have happen is this one simple word. You know what that word is? Accountability. Everybody involved needs to be held accountable, including those who saw something and chose not to say something. And for that, we have lost a little girl. We have lost somebody who could have been something and could have grown up to been something great. This smiling, innocent, Little angel deserved better. We can use this story as a cautionary tale. And every day that we do these stories, we have an opportunity to make a difference. If we see something, it is, it is that important. It is so vital to save a life just like Autumn's. Autumn, young princess, you deserve better. RIP and our condolences to the father. I can't even say to the rest of the family because it didn't seem like anybody else really cared. She deserves so much better. RIP young princess. And that's the end of our stream, okay? This is your boy DJ Just J. We as a collective are the AFC where we advocate for children first. That is always where our priority is. Get out your feelings and get active and protect our babies, okay? 
from my heart to yours. I love you guys, and I thank you guys so much for listening to the story and our stream, and we'll see you guys on the next stream, okay? Peace.